Support Wrestle Talk! Hello, it's me, Chopper Pete. Adam was busy this week, so he couldn't record his voiceover for this list, so it's me instead this time. And he actually wrote out, because he had the intention of recording this voiceover, and he wrote out the intro, and I don't know what reference it is, so I'm just going to read it verbatim as it's written down. Ahem. <coughs> It's time, once again, for everybody to come about the news train. News reporting ain't easy, man. I'm Adam from WrestleTalk, and here are this week's 10 wrestling news stories that you might have missed. See, wasn't that great? I'm, I'm the perfect Adam replacement. Make sure to check out some of our other news videos from this week, because, you know, it's been a week. You know, Vince, all that stuff. Number one, tenured WWE writer leaves. We start things with a farewell and a reminder of how old we've gotten. You remember Cactus Jack's famed Kane Dewey promo from his ECW days? Well, Dewey is 30 years old now. Time passes by so fast it bursts your eardrums. Mrs. Foley's baby boy's baby boy has been a WWE writer since 2016, when he became lead writer for NXT and 205 Live. Remember 205 Live? He also had a role in the network work series Holy Foley and played the New Day's butler Mr. Bootiesworth in 2018. Anyways, PW Insider reported this week that Dewey Foley has officially left WWE after six years with the company. Sources point to the end of April for his exit, but he wrote the following on Instagram during WrestleMania 38 weekend. Been a hell of a ride, but I'm thinking it's time to grow. Been a hell of a ride, but I'm thinking it's time to go. Went out with a bang. Hashtag stand and deliver. Nah. Hashtag stood and delivered. Foley also seemed to confirm his departure to a fan who praised his work in NXT with a simple thank you, farewell, Mrs. Foley's baby grand boy. Number two, Ric Flair heat with Jay Lethal. The nature boy Ric Flair has garnered a lot of heat and headlines recently. 2021 saw Flair ask for his release from WWE before a run in AEW went up in smoke following the controversial plane ride from Hell Dark Side of the Ring episode, and now the 16-time world champion is gearing up for his in-ring return for one final match. Big air quotes on that one. Part of the StarCast 5 convention during SummerSlam weekend on July 13th first in Nashville. Flair then apparently got into it slightly with the man who helped get Flair ready for his return, Jay Lethal. After their training videos, some friction developed between the two, according to Flair. On his To Be The Man podcast, he stated, Jay Lethal's got an attitude. He wants to be part of the show, and I said that ain't gonna happen. That happens and all of a sudden everyone's feelings are hurt? I don't have the authority to put him on the card, so I think he's upset about that, but he'll get over it. Number three, Sanga backstage at SmackDown. In April, Veer's six-month odyssey to come finally ended. Back in the before time of the pandemic, Veer debuted in WWE as Rinku Singh in the Malcolm Bivens-led NXT tag team Induce Share. Props to you if you actually remembered that, because I sure didn't. The team was short-lived after his tag team partner Saurav Gurjart leaked a photo of Keith Lee winning the NXT Championship on social media. That bit, I did remember. Well, Gurjar still has a job and is known as Sanger, or Sanger of the Thunder? Sanger the Thunder, on NXT 2.0. During the June 17th taping of SmackDown in Minneapolis, PW Insider reports that Sanger was backstage. This marked the third straight time he's been at a SmackDown taping after the June 3rd and 10th tapings where he worked dark matches against Wes Lee. Many are speculating the former muscle for Grayson Waller will be heading to the blue brand soon. Number four, WWE considered putting Solo Sokoa with the Usos. Another NXT star who's been pegged for a main roster call-up is Solo Sokoa. The son of Rikishi has the attention of many fans thanks to his brothers the Usos and cousin Roman Reigns, who are all doing, checks notes, fairly well right now. Speaking with BT Sport, Sokoa revealed that before his NXT 2.0 debut, WWE considered putting him with the Usos on SmackDown, but he was hesitant about it, saying, you know, at the end of the day, man, it's so easy to go back to, I'm their brother, I'm their family. I don't want to be referred to as their brother, their cousin. I want people to recognize me for me. Before I debuted on TV, WWE creative was like, we'll put you with your brothers. Then the next meeting was like, let's see what you can do on your own. Number five, Charlotte Flair return date revealed. After recovering from her injured radius following the I Quit match from Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania Backlash, Charlotte Flair has been enjoying her time off from WWE and finally tied the knot with AEW star Andrade El Idolo late last month. Many questioned when her WWE return would be coming after her husband returned to the AEW ring on June 8th. However, a new ad seems to answer to that question. Promoting the upcoming SmackDown TV taping at the PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina, the arena's official website advertises Charlotte Flair being in attendance. This falls in line with the Queen returning soon to set up an inevitable third showdown this year with the reigning SmackDown Women's Champion, and possibly a 14th title reign because, you know, that whole 16 world title reigns thing that Flairs tend to do. Okay, update. So, after this was actually recorded, Charlotte was removed from the advertising altogether, so maybe she won't be returning then, I guess.
Sorry. Making news videos in advance is fun. Number six, Paige to appear at StarCast. Paige here. The former Divas champion officially announced her upcoming departure from WWE after a contract expires in July and has already lined up her first post-dub appearances. Not only will Paige appear for the World Association of Wrestling in the UK for their Frightmare 4 event on October 15th, but she is now officially slated to be part of StarCast 5 in Nashville during SummerSlam weekend as well. The StarCast event's Twitter account posted that she will have an official stage show entitled Soraya turning the page. I, I get it. I understood that reference. Number seven, Naomi to appear on Kevin Hart show. Naomi recently made her return to social media after her shocking walkout with Sasha Banks on the May 16th episode of Raw. After being stripped of the WWE women's tag team titles and her subsequent suspension, Nene is set to make a non-WWE appearance on Kevin Hart's celebrity game face on the E! Network. The comedian will host several current and former WWE talents, including Xavier Woods as well as the Bella Twins. In an Instagram post promoting the show, Naomi is pictured with her husband, Jimmy Uso, but it is not specified if he will appear on the show as well. Naomi further confirmed her involvement on the show by retweeting the advertisement saying she will be on. Her tag team partner Sasha Banks was on Kevin Hart's Cold As Balls YouTube show the same week as their walkout, ironically enough. Number eight, update on Jeff Hardy trial. Well, for a bit of a shift in tone, the wrestling world is still reeling from Jeff Hardy's DUI arrest on June 13th. He's been suspended without pay from All Elite Wrestling, but will now have to deal with the ramifications of his arrest in court. Hardy is scheduled for a hearing next month on July 5th. PW Insider reports that Hardy's hearing has been officially designated an arraignment and bond hearing. That means Jeff will either have to plead guilty or not guilty, followed by a determination of a potential bond to be enforced. It's unclear if this is in relation to the bond Hardy paid to be released from jail the same day as his arrest. As this is Jeff's third DUI in the last 10 years following two arrests in 2019, he's being charged with a felony count of DUI in addition to several misdemeanor charges. If he is convicted, Hardy could potentially face up to five years in prison. Number nine, Tammy Sitch's lawyer files to withdraw from DUI case. On a similar note, Tammy Sitch, better known for a WWE career as Sunny, is still awaiting her own trial on charges of DUI manslaughter after her part in a March car accident where she rear-ended another vehicle at a traffic light, which resulted in the death of a 75-year-old man. Sitch has been in jail since May and she pleaded not guilty in early June. In the latest news from this case, PW Insider reported that Sitch's lawyer has filed a motion requesting he be allowed to withdraw as her legal counsel. This happened just days after Sitch filed a motion to dismiss the civil suit against her for the DUI manslaughter case. In his motion, De La Roche cited several reasons for his withdrawal, including an impasse between him and Sitch regarding the handling of Sitch's case, one that made it impossible for them to continue to work together cooperatively. And number 10, Darby Allen's dad gets powerbombed on thumbtacks. It's what we do. Number 10, we tried to make it lighthearted. Ending this list on a much needed lighter note, if you considered attempted dad aside to be a lighter note. Darby Allen is known for his stunts and overall unmanageable tolerance for pain. Well, it seems to be that it runs in the family. The mad, mad family. To celebrate Father's Day last week, Darby's dad asked to be powerbombed onto a pile of thumbtacks in a show of solidarity with his daredevil son. In a Twitter post, the House of Black's Brody King did the honors of delivering the move to Darby's old man. I am terrified to think what his mum will ask for for Mother's Day next year. So that was our list. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the most interesting news of the week. Yeah, let's go with that. Also, watch another video. Do a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and jam that jam.